Democrats are losing and they're telling you they're losing. These are all the clips of them saying in different ways, we're losing. I'm John Mike Keen. You should have a smile on your face right now. And no one is watching. The and rallies. they're not moving just... the needle. Exactly. If, I mean, needle. this is not me saying this. This is the no. Harris people yeah. privately saying we, we need to move the needle. It is it's stuck. Not moving. It is a stubborn race. Yeah. That's Dana Bash. That's on CNN. Kamala Harris's own campaign is saying we're not moving the needle these are good times they have got to turn the rhetoric down for years now the leading democrats in this country the the high, highest elected officials and the current uh nominee for president have gone out and said that donald trump is a threat to democracy that you know the republic will end if he's reelected. it's absolute nonsense and that's mike johnson pinning the democrats on george stephanopoulos that's on abc that's a second network and we have them on their back heels defending their their violent rhetoric against the president. Mr. Speaker, you just said Democrats are. You said, their, you said their rhetoric is inciting. We all just saw what both President Trump, former President Trump, and his son Eric said. Eric actually did specifically reference Democrats. He said they tried to kill him, they tried to kill him, and it's because the Democratic Party, they can't do anything right. So defensive. And that's nothing. Let's go over to MSNBC with Joe Scarborough. Oh, man, they need a therapist. And uh, we repeat ourselves nearly every morning and talking about this guy. And it's depressing. I can only imagine the impact it has on voters out there listening to him. It's depressing. Look how sad he is. We're depressed. Why are you depressed? He'd be happy if they were ahead. They're seeing that they're down, down, down. And he's on the precipice of again becoming president of the United States. That's a shocking thing to me. It's a God thing to me. This man tried to overturn a legitimate election, tried to overturn an existing government. All the other stuff, all the other stuff is a sideshow compared to that one fact. It's not a sideshow to the American people. The American people know what's going on. You guys tried floating up the J6 thing. You're trying to run it. It didn't work. And now you're mourning. He thought so little of the United States Constitution that he just wanted to rip it up and throw it out the window. And he's this close to becoming president of the United States again. Think about that. It's unbelievable. And think about your vote. Ah, oh, yes, it's working. We're so happy. He's this close, guys. They're admitting it. MSNBC, he's this close to winning again. The problem is he said that Trump's the one that wants to rip up the Constitution and throw it out the window. Everyone knows the Democrat Party does more to rip up the Constitution, like take Trump's name off the ballot, like Jack Smith running all his lawsuits 60 days before an election. Here's Jack Posobiec with more news from the internal conflict that Kamala Harris knew there was a physical altercation. So someone hit someone between Jill and Kamala staffers in the White House after Joe's press room last week began with accusations that the Bidens were undermining Kamala deliberately per a White House official. Here's the unions. Their leaders even are falling away. And I'm getting attacked from the left, you know, and we, we've given, oh, since I've been in, in office two and a half years, we've given the Democratic machine $15.7 million. We've given Republicans about 340000 Yeah, you underfunded the people that actually want to help the American worker, you dummy. But he's a, you know, he's a teamster. He's wearing a t-shirt, teamsters versus everybody. Well, the Republicans would be on your side, maybe if you stopped carrying so much of Kamala's water. You know, people say the Democratic Party is the party of the working people. They're bought and paid for by big tech. That big, those big tech companies. Yeah, tech gotta, is the new that, fossil that, fuel, yeah, man. Right? That's what I say. Right. And you've got the Republicans who are now saying, hey, we want to be the working class party, right? And okay, you've got a great opportunity right now to do that. And the Democrats, if 60% of our members aren't supporting you, 60 percent of the working class are not supporting Democrats. That takes an iron will to do if you're a teamster. And they're turning on the Democrats. This is the tide is turning toward Republicans right now. They needed to fix it. Stop pointing fingers at Sean O'Brien. Stop pointing fingers at the Teamsters Union. Look in the mirror. I mean, I had a I had a heated debate with heated discussion two weeks ago with Chuck Schumer. He's even tearing Chuck Schumer apart. He uses the F word in describing him so many times. I had to cut it out of this video, but he laid into Chuck Chuck Schumer. So that's all the Democrat leadership against the Teamsters. And we got into it pretty heavy. And I'm like, you had no problem taking $550,000 from me three weeks 
prior to me going on the Republican National Convention. Uh, maybe you should uh, put your money elsewhere, Baldy. Try again. Quit disserving your own members. You did this. Turn to Trump. Come out. Support Trump like a man. Don't give me this fake man stuff, this fake tough guy stuff. You're fiscally irresponsible if you're giving Chuck Schumer $550,000, millions more to Democrats than Republicans. It's time for the Teamsters to wake up. I'm glad that they're finally coming around, but this spells disaster for the Democrats. They're losing their stronghold, and I'm happy because I'm John Mike Keene.